The worm kebab rig has really come to the forefront of tench fishing in the last few years and for good reason. If you're fishing worms, which let's be honest have been a brilliant tench bait forever, then it's a very, very effective setup, especially if you feed a fish in at long range. So today I'm going to have a look at how we tie it up and exactly why it's so effective. And if you like these videos, please give us a thumbs up and maybe hit the subscribe button below. So let's have a look at how we tie it up. Okay, so I'm going to put my glasses on so I can actually see what I'm doing. There we go. And to kick off with, um, I'm going to use some eight pound fluorocarbon for the hook length. Now I'd normally use between eight and 10 pound depending on exactly how we do the venue is, but uh, eight pounds a good starting point. Uh, most fluorocarbon is quite springy. So what I tend to do is just pull it between my finger and thumb a few times before I cut it off the spool, just to straighten it out a little bit. And there's another way that we're going to get them really straight um, that I'll show you later, which is a good tip to get your hook legs absolutely spot on. Cut it off and I cut it at a slight angle just to make it easier to thread on the different components onto the hook length. And there we go. Now this rig's going to be slightly longer than say a, a maggot helicopter rig and I want the finished hook length to be about six or seven inches long. So uh, I'll start off with about 12 inches of, of uh, the monofilament hook length. And I prefer that the, the uh, uh, fluorocarbon it's nice and easy to tie it's nice and stiff and it is slightly less visible underwater although I don't think that makes a great deal of difference. Now the next component you need is a couple of these quick stops they're made by a few different companies great way of attaching various baits but absolutely essential for the worm kebab rig and I'm going to thread two of those onto the end of my hook length. Now normally obviously you'd only use one but for this rig you'll see why we need two of those threaded on. And then I'm going to now take about two inches on the end of the hook length and tie a relatively large overhand loop knot. And what I'll do is I'll make sure those two quick stops have gone through the loop and are actually attached inside the loop. And I guess there we go, the finished loop is about half an inch, 15 millimetres or so in size. And again, you'll see in a minute exactly why it needs to be quite so big. And then we'll just trim off the end. So what we've basically done is made a loop to form our hair. And we've trapped two of these quick stops inside that loop. And you'll see why that is exactly coming up shortly. Now hooks are a personal choice um, for this rig and for a lot more rigs actually. I like these which is the Nash Fang X um, in a size 10. Very sharp hook. It's got quite a long aggressively curved shank uh, which means the hook will turn very quickly and um, leads to some really really nice hook holds. Very effective hook. Um, I use it for a lot of other species as well for bream, um, chub and barbel as well in different rigs but very effective for this uh, tench rig. And what we're going to do is tie um, a knotless knot with our hook and hook length and what I'll do is I'll just put the knot on the loop for the hair about level or maybe slightly longer, a couple of mil away from the bend of the hook. Hold that in place and then make 10 turns or down the shank of the hook, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. And then just a simple knotless knot back through the eye of the hook. Pull that tight to trap it in place. And it's not even a knot, the knotless knot, but it does trap it and very, very strong and effective. And there we go, we've got a hook attached and our hair formed. Very, very simple. Now at the other end of the hook length, I like to keep all my rigs as simple as, as possible really, as few components as I can get away with. Um, for a couple of reasons. One, the more bits and bobs you've got on your rigs, the more likely they are to tangle I think. And the second reason is that it's just more bits and bobs that are visible on the bottom. And I don't think that makes a massive difference to the fish, but it could make a slight difference. And so if you don't need them, just leave them out. So we're going to put the swivel on. 
and get that to about the right position where we want it. There we go. So it's slightly short, about five inches at the moment, and that'll bed down when the knot's tied. And then we're just going to tie four turn green and knot. There we go. One, two, three, four. Make sure that's nice and wet. And there we go. Snug it down. I don't like to snug it, or pull the knot too tight until it's snug down because it will crinkle the hook length. But there we go, pull it down nice and tight now. And there we go, and then we can just snip off that loose end, just leave a couple of mil just in case. And there we go, there's the basic hook length. As I say, it's a bit crinkly where we've tied a knot, not particularly straight, but then what I tend to do is use a rig board like this, and I'll attach the rig pin it out and um, leave it there until I'm ready to fish. And even that being on a rig board for an hour or so will make a difference and we'll straighten the rig out and just make sure that uh, it looks really nice and neat. So that's the hook length tied, but what about the rest of the rig? Well again, I like to keep it dead, dead simple. So onto my main line. I fish this helicopter style normally. So what I'll do is onto the main line I'll just thread a rig stop. There we go, which goes on nice and tight. Main line's slightly heavier and slightly stronger than the hook length, just in case I, I do get snagged up, I can pull for a break and just lose the hook length. So generally speaking, I'll use 10, 10 or 12 pound main line to an eight or 10 pound hook length. I put one of those rig stops on and just moved it about 18 inches up the line at the moment. Doesn't really matter at this stage. Thread the swivel on. There we go. And then what we want to do is thread the second rig stop on. There we go. So we can now position those rig stops wherever we want to trap the hook length in place. And I don't use any any tangle sleeves or anything like that because I find they actually cause more tangles than they, they stop. So that's it, very, very simple. And on the end goes a cage feeder. This could be uh, a wire mesh cage feeder, but I do like these uh, plastic ones. Ideal really for fishing worm and ground bait. And the feeder will be stuffed with, or plugged at each end with some ground bait and then fill with chop worm and caster in the centre. And there you go, another four turn grinner. Make sure you wet it. And pull it down and tighten it up. There we go, again, no covers on there. No bits and bobs. Keep it very, very simple. You don't need them. It just adds to the faff. And what I do now is adjust that so the hook length, or the hook and the bait, sit just above the feeder. And that's a helicopter rig, it will spin. Because the hook length's a bit longer, um, it won't spin very well. But because you've got a fairly stiff main line and a very stiff hook length, it uh, won't tend to tangle too much. And uh, it's just very simple and effective. So that's the basic rig. Now let's have a look at how we put the bait on. Okay, so we tied the rig up. Let's have a look how we attach the bait. And you'll see now why I've got the two um, quick stops on the rig. So I'm going to grab one of my dendrobina worms. Some nice worms there. They're all nice and clean. And right, first thing I'm going to do is grab one of the quick stops on the hair. And using one of these little quick stop needles, push that in. And then take a worm. Doesn't have to be a very big worm. I tend to use the medium sized dendrobenas are fine. And what I'll do is I'll go about a third of the way, maybe not even quite that, along the worm. And I'll go straight through quickly. There we go. And then take the end of the worm. And then again, just after over halfway up the worm, go through again. There we go. Because the quick stop's got quite a sharp point on it, it goes through nice and easy. There we go, we trapped the needle. And so what I've done is I've trapped that worm 
between the two quick stops. Now these aren't particularly big worms and you can use, oops, attach that again because there's, it's, I can put quite a big bait on here. So if I want to put another worm on, no problem at all. Again, same thing, through one time, fold the worm over, through again, there we go. Two worms hooked up on there. Make sure they can't tangle themselves up, which they would if they get half a chance. And then just to finish off, what I tend to do is then just snip through the bits of the worm. There we go. Just to leave the finished kebab. Very simple, very easy to bait up. And the beauty is, is that because the, the worms are trapped between the quick stops, they're very unlikely to tangle. And um, it recasts really well and uh, the worms are protected from uh, being uh, smashed off when the, when the feeder hits them or the rig hits the water. They're very, very effective. And you ended up with a, with a little group of bits of worm that are about the same size as a lot of the natural food attench, things like caddis larvae um, and other sort of creepy crawlies, invertebrates that you find underwater. Make up the natural diet of the tench. So it's very, very effective, mimics that natural food and uh, well worth trying out. A very effective rig. Well, and that's about all there is to it. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you like your tench fishing or any other kind of coarse fishing, really, then please check out my YouTube channel because there's loads more videos on there covering a whole range of different species. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.